Hey guys, alright, today we're going to talk about a, this is a state by Whirlpool, which this type of washer is several different types, Whirlpool, Kenmore, Crosley, Estate, uh, some Maytags, but for right now this is the type, uh, it's the pull-out knob type, it's not the type that has a little button that pushes pause play, that's totally different, uh, everything in them, so this is the type you pull off the knob to start it with. Alright, what's going on is it's leaking water and it's going to be from the water pump and how to know that really quickly without having to take the whole thing apart to look at it is you, you can get it away from the wall just a little bit make sure your hoses aren't going to get messed up or you're going to break the line or something behind it but you've got to lean it back so pull it up away from the wall that you can lean it back some and the water pump is right here and if it's dripping right there that's where the water and you can see what's dripping right there there's a little drip started all right, and it's going to do this only when there's water in it or when it's nearly, it might slowly do it when it's completely drained, but it's really going to do it when it actually has water, when you have water in the tub. So I'm going to lean this a little bit further. A lot of people will try to take this water pump out without taking the case off. In my opinion, this is much harder to do. We're just going to take the case off to go ahead and replace the water pump. It's not that difficult. It's just kind of difficult if you've never done it before. So. Right here, we'll take a Phillips. There's two screws. One right here. I'm already loosening it up. You just bring it all the way up to the top. And one on the opposite side. So, from here, it's going to go forward a little bit and it'll come right off. These have little hooks. So, that's why we're having to go forward just a little bit. I've already messed with this a little bit. It had a bad switch and someone cut it off and I had to replace the switch. I'm not quite done with that. But from here, you're going to release this. You may have to get a flathead to do that. I'm going to push that down again so you can see what I'm doing. You know, put your flathead or if you have a small Phillips, it'll work. Pull that forward and that will pop out. Same thing on this side. Before you release it, you'll unplug this. Sometimes the plug will be over here. There's a different type of lid switch. I have this one wired weirdly. I'm just going to take this plug off. I haven't put it all together yet. And when you go to take a plug off, you lift up a little bit or release it. All right. Open up this side. Put these where you can find them again. From here, I'm going to lean it forward a little bit. And now, it's going to have a lip underneath the bottom. You're going to have to be able to lift straight up. You're going to have to just scoot it on both sides. And when we go to go back on, I'll show you that. That's the hardest part is getting that back lined up. All right, from here, we're at the water pump. There's two latches, one right there. You just flip that up, one right here. Flip that down. This is either going to be stuck or it's not. It's not. Sometimes what I just did will be extremely difficult because you can see there's water right here. Actually, it looks like it's dripping from uh, a different spot than it usually drips. Usually, it'll always drip from right here, but this pump is actually busted right there. You can see where it's separated. That's probably from running it dry. Somebody ran it dry, meaning that it uh, had no water in the water pump at all, and someone turned it on and it overheated. It has to have water in it to keep it cool enough that it doesn't burn up. It's just all plastic. All right, but anyway, if this had water on it long enough, it will swell with rust, and it will be stuck on there. And sometimes you'll play with it for a little while, and you'll get it off. I've had it where before where I could not get it off, and I literally had to beat it off with a hammer. And... I mean, it's, it, there's no fix in these anyway, so you're going to replace it, but if you come down to that, sometimes that just happens. It'll be so swollen in there, there's no way to get it off there, and you'll just take the outside, and you'll break it all the way around with a hammer, pull off the pieces, being careful not to bend this shaft is the main thing, or break this plug. But other than that, it's actually fairly durable. All right, so from here, I'm going to take this clamp and this clamp off. It's going to leak water, so if you want to put a towel underneath it, and also if, if 
if your tub is full of water, it's gonna leak a lot. But even when it's empty, there's always a little bit of water that's gonna be in here. It's just gonna pour. This is my shop floor. I don't care about it getting wet. But you may want to do like this, lean it back carefully. You might have to have a second person in there. Pull this hose off and let it pour into a bucket. But this one actually doesn't have a ton of water. You take that off. That's trash. And I'll grab the new one. Exact same one. I got this on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. Uh, it goes back and forth on prices. Uh, this one was, I think, $10. Sometimes it'll be $15. It just depends. Um, but I'll put a link in the description below. All right, we're going to go right back. First, check where the position is on this compared to that. And you want to have it about the same. You can turn this shaft just a little bit to get it right. Let's see, actually, is that right? A little bit more. And probably dry check this. All right, so yeah, we're good to go. All right, put it back on. Put that one back on. From here, we'll squeeze that. Bring it back. Try to hit the exact same spot that it was sitting in. And you'll see in the back side, there's a little lip right there that the rubber will bump up against. That's so you know it's all the way against it. You can see the lip here, it's not quite against there right there is. So we're going to do that with this one. Squeeze, put it right back on. Make sure those lips, the rubber's right against the lip, right against the lip, they're all the way seated. I have had it before where it still will try to drip a little bit and I've, uh, I've had to put regular clamps like uh, that you would put on um, automotive that you can tighten down with pliers to make it a little bit tighter. These just get weak over time. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. But most of the time it's alright. Just gotta put that back on. And here's your two clips. One, we'll be able to see this real easy, goes in that hole right there and it'll do like a little turnkey thing. We'll turn it halfway. There it goes. Just like that. And we'll push it down. And that's one. The other one's going to be harder to see. I'll just do it. The exact same thing from the top. Boom. Alright, now we're ready to put it back together. That's a fixed water pump. We're done. Now the hard part, this is why most people avoid taking this lid off, is getting this lid back in place. Right here. And before you go any further, one thing to check, if you do have the lid switch that's on this side and not this side, sometimes it will, uh, if you have an issue where you have to push the little bit to make that switch click to make it work, you can adjust that now by taking a pair of pliers, this metal rod right here. You're going to hold that and you're going to lift the lid just a, or let's see, you're going to push the lid, uh, you want this to go up higher, so you're going to hold it in place and lift the lid a little bit. And that will bend this so it touches a little bit harder. This is very common, just happens over time. This will wear a little bit and it'll get a little bit down. This one actually needs it, but I gotta do another thing to this, so I'll take it back apart and do it in a minute. But now putting this back on. I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna come forward. And what I'm looking at from right here, I'm gonna look inside here, come over. Is there's a lip on the bottom right here and there's a it's, this is going to go underneath this so this lip has to go under that and I'm just going to line this up until it's right there now that lip is under there that's the part that most people are missing that's going to go underneath and the other goes on top so as I come down this has to come forward a little bit now Sometimes these fell right into place. Sometimes these will not and they'll be winged out and you'll have to come up and push it back in. But other times this little piece right here will really mess you up. 
it will get bent down or bent sideways and it goes into a receiving hole right here so if this is bent you have to bend it back pointing straight up so it can land in that hole otherwise this is just going to fall right back out and there'll be a floppy noise every time it goes to spin cycle so Check both sides. This side has to land on the same exact thing. Now your clips. This is where everyone messes this up, including me. Your clip goes right inside that hole first, and then it sits right there, and all you have to do is push down. Do it again on this side. It goes this way, inside that hole first, and push down. And we're in place. You're going to flip over with the lid, which I have a couple of things. Put your lid switch back on, or plug it back in in your case. Mine, I'm, I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to take this right back apart in a second and work on something else. You're going to push this in place. Those, you'll feel them, they barely go back, but they go back just a little bit. You won't be able to lift either side. You'll tighten both the Phillips head screws down, and you're done. You're ready to go ahead and turn it on. And... What I do sometimes is I'll let it run through a full cycle after the floor is dry, and I'll take a paper towel and I'll place it underneath the front end, slide underneath the front end, the paper towel stays dry, you know, the water pump is good, your two connections I was talking about that sometimes leak are good, and you don't have to worry about your floor later getting wet. So that's a quick, quick way to try it out, always test out. Alright, any questions guys, please put them in the comments down below, please like and share, it really helps out the channel.